Good morning. I want to thank everybody who joined us. My name is Olga Atamanova, and it's Ukrainian Media Center who confirms starting its operation today. It's year nine of the war, and we're in today 246 of the full-scale invasion of the Russian aggressor in our land. And today we will talk about a very important topic of the Ukrainians' experience seeking psychological help and barriers on this path the culture of taking care of your mental health by the estimates of our psychologists we understand that almost every ukrainian unfortunately needs such kind of aid and today we will have the presentation of the research on this topic i want to introduce our guests is Anna Lushai, Head of Accessibility and Mental Health at the Office of the First Lady of Ukraine, Viktor Lushko, Minister of Health, and Anna Lienko, Representative of Gredos Research. Ms. Anna, we'll start with you. Please, what are the challenges? What are the challenges that we're facing today and in what way the Office of the First Lady helps into solving these problematic issues? Thank you. Hello, everybody. I want to thank the journalists for their attention to the subject of the psychological health, which is a very important topic during this wartime. When we start uh, working on a big scale process, we need a very consistent work and preparation. And you cannot go this way without uh, understanding because uh, you first need to understand where you start and where you're moving. So the program of psychological help is more than a big scale project because it has a very ambitious goal to implement the system which would provide an access to high quality, high quality service of the psychological help to everybody who needs it. And uh, we come back to the issue of research. We, we need to go deeper in detail that it may seem at first sight so to, to, to track the, the path of the patient, not only in, on the way to the getting the psychological help, but where it starts. How frequently do you ask yourself, how do you feel? Do you ponder over your psychological condition? Uh, what do we do when we, are, we're, when we feel all right? What information are we seeking and where we go? and or are we, or we don't go anywhere and we keep everything inside what is your psychological condition how is it do we ponder over the issue of uh, physical and, uh, and mental health uh, inter interdependentness it, it's all a little bit mixed up because there are stigma and bias and we have to sort it out and to overcome the barriers which impede us from seeking the psychological help uh, we need to overcome these biases we need to understand that psychologists that even during the even during the difficult war time, we all need psychologists. We need to, to know how to apply the self-help techniques, not to be afraid to seek the psychologist's help, to know where to go for this help. It's important for everybody today. And when uh, when our heart aches, we go to cardiologists. When to, uh, when your ear hurts, you go to otolaryngologist, and, but when your soul hurts, where do you go? And the spread of this knowledge is one of the challenges being, which is sought by this program. The research completed by the Gradus company, they show how Ukrainians treat their psychological help and their readiness to go for psychological help and what are the barriers on their way to seeking this psychological help. And based on these research r results, we can see where, where do we go further. 
and it's our benchmark and the task of the government and the partners is to have the system accessible this system of psychological help accessible to everybody thank you miss mrs anna your your team completed this research can you please tell us about the results of this research thank you first of all i would like to start with the with a minor presentation of our company we are 100 percent ukrainian research company we work we started working in year 2019 as our foreign colle colleagues say it's we are women-based company our main advantage is that everything we do we question Ukrainians, uh, the advantage is that we did do it online starting from year 2019 and in this year we don't uh, put our respondents in danger, we don't walk around the apartments, we just send the questionnaires to their cell phones which provides the high quality of the results because now the telephones are 24 7 with us without exaggeration and is the territory of maximum privacy which uh, ensures the privacy of the data we receive because nobody can influence nobody can distort the information it's like uh, not that you try to seem better than you are and people give very s honest answers it's Olena Evgenia Bliznyuk uh, you probably all know her we, we can go further the background of the project well we had our co colleagues colleagues from back come to us about what happened after full-scale invasion of R Russia and uh, we've seen that the psychological help of the uh, psychological health of Ukrainians is not on a high level we researched the negative factors that influence the health of our patients and uh, there is a bias in Ukraine whether you need to go to a doctor for the, your psychological with your psychological problems and this is these are the issues we pondered over starting our research we we proposed the following design of the research we, we worked worked with two audiences first part is a white target audience who are the recipients of psychological help I will make a minor remark. We didn't work with all the Ukrainians. We were working with the people of the age 18 to 60 years, the citizens who lived in the cities with a population of over 50,000 people. And when I say citizens or Ukrainians or population, I would mean the inhabitants of a community which may represent some part of the Ukrainians within this range. And another part of our audience were the experts, the psychologists who work in the volunteers' organizations, the psychotherapists who have uh, their commercial practices, and psychiatrists. Why did we choose specifically this target audience? Because we wanted to see from both sides the issue of how people realize their psychological condition. And uh, the human brain is built in a way that it, that it refuses certain, uh, so to say, aspects that it doesn't like. So we had to see from the vantage point of the professionals, is it real? How, how honest is that when people say that I don't have any psychological issues? And the, the research was built in two stages. F first stage was a quality stage. So we've chosen the format of individual in-depth interviews when our Ukrainians 
were talking to our moderator face to face so that we could get a better information due to the issue sensitivity and we very on the first stage we verified the number and we uh we uh, measured all the hypotheses and insights. So we were questioning uh, both like target audience and uh, expert o audience that allowed, enabled us to see the condition of the Ukrainian society in general. The research was held in September and we've seen that certain factors that are today's reality do not exist there yet. So let's see the results in uh, more detail. First, we will see in a couple of slides on uh, how the general audience estimate their psychological health w and their attitude on the second psychological health. First, so what I want to draw your attention to is that half of those questioned say that they they assess their psychological condition as average. The average is already a risk, a risk zone because average can, uh, uh, can proceed to the risk area of uh, critical condition. It's, it was a subjective questioning. They were offered the scale from 1 to 10, and the r result were calculated based on the figure that we received. What are they, those assessments based on? What do they rely upon as when they assess their psychological condition? And we see that that vast majority, 91%, they rely on their personal sensations, it's their personal thought, not confirmed by any professional in this area. Then we see another issue which is very important. This, the figure is pretty big. It's 71% of those questions declare that lately they were feeling stress or nervousness. Just imagine that two-thirds of the population are under stress and they can express it. Uh, and there is yet another interesting section on the angle under which we would like to see the, this stress sensation and nervousness. So we see that the, there are two, two groups, uh, the youth and the w women who feel most stressed. Uh, it's due to the fact that the women are the keepers of homes, so to say, and the youth aged 25 to 35, they have small kids, and that's why their level of stress is higher. Uh, but there are good news, well, maybe not good news, but still, the people aged 50 plus but we we believe that 55 plus they feel less stress than the other categories what what is the reason uh, i i will give you an example from my personal life and you've probably seen uh, such people I I in your life you know, the the parents the parents your parents the parents of your friends like we 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 are not going to leave kiev under no conditions and if uh, the, there is a strike there is a missile strike well we already had time of our life and this is probably the opinion they're having which uh, puts them under less stress. And it's not a secret to anybody that the full-scale war of Russia in U Ukraine is the main factor of stress. The second factor of stress is our financial complications. And if we see uh, this, the section of this, the breakdown of these stress factors, they are all related with the resistance, resistibility, resilience of human psyche. And we see that they are actually the first two levels of Maslow 
pyramid. And now that the basic needs of the vast majority of Ukrainian population are not covered, this understanding should push us to uh, to, to covering an another levels of, uh, of the Maslow pyramid, and we know that they cannot be covered w w without the first, uh, the basic ones being covered, the ones related to security, to safety, material security, the aspects of uh, the main factors of the stress is the security of the closed ones and the loss of the source of income, loss of job, and other factors are uh, the risks of loss or damage to the property, the risk of death, and uh, deprivation from your deprivation of the families, deprivation of your close ones. One of the major issues that we've seen now that the psychologists will work with in future, well, he, he even he, even the taxi driver who brought me here today, he told me that he hasn't seen his family for seven months now. And I think that a lot of population in Ukraine is uh, in the same condition. Let's see the emotions that dominate in our society. Well, they are the tension, tiredness, and hope, hope, which is positive. We still believe in victory, and uh, we, it can be worked with in communication and in psychological practice. Now let's proceed to the negative conditions felt lately by the people. These are the symptoms that the experts refer to PTSD, so it's an anxiety, bad quality of sleep, irritation, exhaustion. They are on the very high level. Uh, as, and it was uh, recognized by our respondents themselves, our population. And here I would like to draw your attention to what we do. Uh, like well, what people do when they feel this stress. Uh, in fact, they try to escape the reality. Almost 40% of the internet, they escape to internet. So we believe that they just keep scrolling through internet, watching movies, listening to music, and sometimes communicating with their families and friends. We show the representation of all the factors taken more than 10% and out of all the population, only 2% mentioned that they that they seek advice from psychotherapists or family doctors when they feel the symptoms of anxiety. So the conclusion is on the surface. The practice of seeking specialist assistance is non-existent. Here we can see uh, the practice of seeking the psychological help, which, as I mentioned, is non-existent. However, we see two groups that pose the exclusion. They seek, they keep seeking psychological help. They are women and uh, youth below 25 years. I think that to promote the communication campaign for future, the appeal to this audience would be easier implement. It would help to easier implement these practices, because they are all, all, they are already built to seeking the psychological help. What our Ukrainian population think is the better. Uh, better uh, like r reason to seek psychological help or e enough reason for psychological help. It's imprisonment and uh, loss of uh, the close ones in the war and the existence of psychological issues is only in the third place as a factor. If we talk about categories of the people, 
categor categories of Ukrainians who have who who are entitled to seek the psychological help so they are the the military and those who lost their close ones in the war along with the civils who were living under occupations so as we see the the people with just psychological some damage that they are not included in this list as per the opinion of our people in fact this is the short list of what we've studied after after the after the completion uh, after the end of our discussion we will give you access to the full full-scale presentation of what ukrainians feel and now we'll proceed to the block of of the expert assessment of the condition of ukrainians it's like our psychologists psychiatrists uh, estimate of the population's psychological health uh, unlike unlike the self assessment by the population the uh, the experts estimated as the average average satisfactory level uh, you remember that pre previously we had 51% and by expert assessment is 68% and in the opinion of experts 26% are already in critical condition and in the opinion of conditions, the most population is required by those who lost their close ones due to the war and those involved in uh, warfare operations. And though, uh, along with the civilians uh, left I I under occupation. The experts describing those who were seeking the psychological help to the most extent they described their audience in this in the following way so in the first per first place is those who were near the warfare operations and those who were at war they are still at war and those who were under occupation they are still in occupation and uh, they still do not seek psychological help so that they remain there in their condition and only the third place is taken by the people who have issues with their mental health that in the top of those who were seeking psychological help uh, with whom the psychologists and psychiatrists work are the s civilians who su suffered certain experiences uh, and the internally relocated persons. We gathered a wide range of symptoms, in fact, PTSD symptoms, and we arranged them by the, by the level of their expression in the opinion of the experts we see that 90 percent percent of the population feel uh, anxiety and tension 80 percent feel emotional instability 73 percent uh, uh, sleep problems with sleep and it describes it describes the psychological condition of the ukrainians in the opinion of the experts well what conclusions did we come to uh, first of all the attitude to the psychological condition among ukrainians is not serious only seven percent of the population declare that they take it serious the realization of uh, importance of psychological health among ukrainians is very low too and the readiness to change their opinion was expressed well by minor number of ukrainians as well so mostly the people are not ready as to the gender breakdown we already mentioned it and psychologists confirm it by gender uh, women are more inclined to seek in psychological help and they treat this issue with a better degree of realization and they seek 
more psychological help so this audience is more loyal and we have to start communication and s expanding this practice through those most loyal as to the age breakdown they are the people aged 25 to 35 which uh, which is uh, coincides with the previous figures so they are the people who started building their families who have small kids and they realize to better extent they realize the importance of this practice so we and uh, this r review, what the experts think about the conditions of Ukrainians, and we proceed to the final block to, to better understand how to change the attitude of Ukrainians to psychological help. So one of the key slides I have in this presentation in the, is in opinion of the citizens we we united two issues the the, the feeling of, of necessity of the psychological help and and the real and the real contact for psychological help and there and the, 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 there is a picture that we see that some people who even thought they need psychological help they did not go any anywhere for this help and why do people think that they do not have to seek such help and they think that their problems are not enough for seeking the psychological help like Anna mentioned if uh, if our heart our heart hurts we go to cardiologist but if our soul hurts we go to like we don't go anywhere they think they think that they can cope with the, the psychological issues themselves if we talk about the same issue in the opinion of the experts, they think that the main barrier why people do not seek psychological help is, is a bias with regard to like that the psychological help is only for those who have real psych problems. They confuse psychologists with psychiatrists and they think that these kind of problems may be solved on their own. When we were questioning the white crowds uh, how to change the uh, attitude to the psychological help, they say that uh, we need to implement information campaigns and it's good news because it's possible. Uh, when we uh, ask psychologists how to increase the accessibility of uh, this service, uh, how to increase the number of Ukrainians seeking psych uh, psychological help, they say that uh, the, this help should become more accessible and uh, we, we should have some positive feedback but how, where we should should we take it when there is no wide ac access to this issue so we proceed to the question of how to contact uh, through whom can we contact we ask ukrainians what what's your level of trust to the different institutions so the highest level of trust is to the armed forces of Ukraine and to president and we asked what organizations enjoy the most trust of Ukrainians and the top top place was taken by our digital instrument dia through which uh, Ukrainians can communicate and out of uh, information sources, Ukrainians trust most to the psychologists and psychotherapists, which means, which means we can continue in this direction. That's it with us. Thank you very much, Miss Anna. Thank you very much for such a comprehensive research, Mr. Victor. We see from the presentation that something that's inherent with in all of us we cope with our problems on our own and it's still not a standard for us to recognize our problems and it's not standard for us to seek uh, specialists
assistance specialist help what are the steps taken by the ministry of health what are the programs being implemented good good morning i wish everybody strong psych psychic and psychological health this presentation today is a foundation that shows that the problem existing throughout the world it exists in ukraine as well and we're not worth and we're not better than the others and we have to solve those issues we have to pay attention to psychological health uh, along with the physical health i would like to to talk and maybe break down into two factors or two levels first is the factors influencing the psychological condition on the, of the people and what to do if those factors are have already influenced if we don't exclude those factors uh, we uh, the, the person a person should seek uh, psychological help so we've seen a number of factors existent in the country before war and starting from 24th february there is a new factor the full-scale ag Russian aggression against Ukraine, for us, for us experts, it's not known yet because this level of war within the this level of war was not this scale was not existent during the whole er uh, period of observation of psychological help. And we will have to research, research this within the next de decades. And uh, along with a high level of inter informatization, we understand that, that there is a limited number of Ukrainians in the front lines, but what we were seeing during the first days of war, we were seeing it live. Like live, everything was happening in, in front of our eyes. The people were dying and it was all uh, in front of our eyes seen through the internet internet is on the first level of all the ratings where people search for information in the first place we were com comparing we were comparing the terroristic act of 11 september in the uh, united states the america it, it was all live on tv too and uh, American researchers so uh, showed the in, uh, influence on the psychological health of the Americans, and the same will be applicable to uh, Ukrainians in uh, under these war conditions. I have to ask everybody not to be ashamed of this. The psychological support is not something that w was imposed on us starting from the. Soviet times when the words psychology and psychiatry was associated in the first with uh, with the white robes with the sleeves tied behind your back the psychological support is a standard and this standard should become a component a standard component in all the families and the visit to the doctor to, to the family doctor should be a standard for everybody it should be a priority not uh, not a visit to the shop for a bottle of alcohol or other means that people uh, try to fight their stress with like eating sweets or using alcohol but we're fighting some in this case we're fighting something uh, not useful but they should in fact go to a professional who would direct them further on to the some psychological specialist or psychiatrist and we are already taking care of this and the system starts working this is why i want to thank the first lady for her initi uh, initiative which united many agencies and organizations around this initiative to work on the challenges that exist today already we cannot say that it's only the ministry of health because it's the issue with the health only it should be a joint effort on all the levels and everybody should help each other and for this we need to know how to help because just like in other uh, treatment processes the main rule is not to bring uh, not to damage because it, it can bring do more damage than help so we're talking that the uh, 
we have to establish new program approaches to the provision of psychological help and support with further treatment even now after the beginning of war in the system of healthcare 650,000 people came to psychologists for help and they received this support and uh, out of the government system of uh, psychological support we see the people seeking help uh, in on all the levels even by ministry of emergency ministry of internal affairs uh, ministry of defense and so on but we have to promote this issue so that people keep seeking psychological help so and in this situation we have people and we have experts and when we talk about the people is like the government should uh, take care of something it's not like on a personal level i should go a psychologist but it's like the government should take care of this but again, the factors that cause stress in, in people is a number of components uh, that we see in the system of uh, health protection. We, on our part, have to do to do most when people seek or wants to seek this medical aid. Uh, we have to provide guarantees that the person would get this medical help and now uh, uh, and medical help along with the eight medicines. Uh, we implemented this uh, program where we have 13 medicines free of charge distributed already uh, for, for some persons who need these medicines. The government already compensates it, the state compensates it. So we pro it probably requires more effort on our aid. And uh, now about the family doctors, we I I implement certain medical guarantees program which will increase the funding and the family doctors who go through certain training courses uh, which involve international partners and Ukrainian trainers, U Ukrainian instructors. The family doctors start uh, working with the psychological trauma, identifying the factors which require further treatment. We uh, uh, started big scale work we become stronger together and we become healthier together and everybody should understand their role in this process and comply with that role and move forward i will say a banal thing that everybody thinks that we are resilient to the stress i i think the same i run in the morning and i try to keep my heart beat within to 120 130 Per, per, per minute I run through the forest and there are stray dogs there and we became friends already with those do dogs but when I run past those dogs anyway uh, my heartbeat increases and when and when a dog just raises its head the, the heartbeat increases e e even more so it happens subconsciously so imagine how many factors do we have around us factors like this like when the air raid alert siren goes off for example and these are the factors that we have to fight the we have to counter but some of the factors we cannot influence but we have to be we have to be ready for the influence of those factors and to provide the necessary assistance to those who need this help. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to proceed to the journalist's questions. Good morning, Natalia Malchalama, Ukar Inform. You mentioned that in your program, in the program of medical guarantees, we will have the retraining programs for the the doctors and the packages of medical help for what I remember these packages were prepared starting from September does it work already how many uh, how many doctors were already retrained for what I understand the psychologists and psychotherapists we will need more and more of them and recently Ministry of Health they uh, announced the implementation of the of the duty of a medical psychologist and training of such specialists 
uh, to the best of my understanding, the people who work in the hospitals, they should be working, uh, those who should be, the psychologists working in the hospital should be the ones who have some medical, some medical ed education. And I know that psychologists, the diploma of psychologist is being issued by the just regular educational institutions. And it's not always of the proper quality, the, the, the proper quality of training. As of today, according to the techniques of uh, International World Health Organization, about 600 doctors already were retrained. And until the year 2024, we will have 10,000 family doctors uh, retrained under this program with the issuance of proper certificate uh, in uh, any post of medical help there should be at least one doctor who would be able to provide such support as to the psychologists who work in the hospitals there is a notion of a clinical psychologist which has uh, some qualification requirements uh, meaning that not every psychologist can become a clinical psychologist but every every psychologist can go through a relevant training course and to improve their skills it can be done as well what we've done for the time being we included them in the list of employees with the higher education with the higher medical education which uh, enables to employ them on the with with the same level with the same level of wage uh, paid to the medical personnel it allows the psychologists to go to the regular hospitals where they can claim their 20,000 hryvnias which is basic uh, payment level for their medical personnel it was done after the proper re resolution of a proper decree of the Ministry of Health and I think that the same is applicable to the chaplains uh, like we withdrew from this practice which was uh, of Soviet Union who uh, destroyed this Institute of Chaplains and psychological support in the same way that it works in in the world any more questions friends please good morning Anastasia Sheplova Deutsche Welle it's obvious to everybody, I guess, that in big cities, the situation uh, in the big cities is way uh, m easier in the big cities. What's your estimate with this, uh, of the psychological support of Ukrainians in occupation? We've seen that it's one of, one of the vulnerable groups of the population who require this psychological help uh, and the same applies to the some small settlements which are close to the front lines and a lot of people try to evacuate from there in what way does the government encourage the specialists to go to these far outposts and to pr provide uh, support there i want to First of all, I want to thank all the medical personnel, and not only medical personnel, I want to thank everybody who works in the territories where the Russians try to implement their occupation re regime, who continue to provide help and support to Ukrainians left in under those difficult conditions. Well, we understand that it's difficult to live, uh, that it's not everybody who can leave their homes, leave their property acquired within their lives. We continue paying the medical specialists who work who keep working in those areas where uh, Russians try to impose their regime we know about their basic needs but unfortunately Russia is terrorist it infringes all the conventions all the war conventions no single humanitarian corridor for delivery of medicines for supply of m m medical help to both military and civil within eight, eight months of war was not provided. And we tell about this to all the international partners. We demand, or we demanded from international partners, Doctors Without Borders, ICRC, WHO, we're, we demand them to go there and see. 
there is a difficulty with access to medicines. We have medicines and we are ready to uh, deliver them through humanitarian humanitarian corridor upon the first call but unfortunately the terrorists did not give us an opportunity to use this chance in what way the state encourages and i want to thank our president and the armed forces of ukraine they do everything what they can to deoccupy the territory as soon as the territory is deoccupied both uh, state authorities and uh, humanitarian organizations start working there and this is what we can do we cannot probably guarantee the accessibility of medical help under shellings in this to the same degree that we can guarantee it in other regions but it's not like everything depends on us here so i want to thank everybody who gradually step by step liberates ukrainian land to bring back that degree of medical support that we can provide thank you sir any more questions I want to thank our journalists to their, for their interest to this utmostly important topic and thank our speakers for this important conversation. Let's not forget the war is still on. Seek medical help, seek psychological help and believe in our armed forces.